بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد الطيب الطاهر الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته والتابعين له بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد uh, Our praise belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, We praise him in the most excellent way and we send salutations to our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to extend our humble greetings to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, we acknowledge that Allah ta'ala is our Lord and our caretaker and we are truly grateful for the blessing of uh, surrender to Allah Islam and we are uh, grateful for all of the favors that Allah Ta'ala uh, gives us, and we ask Allah Ta'ala to make us of those who are constantly remembering the favors of Allah. And uh, we are grateful to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala for the blessing of, of guidance and for the blessing of mercy. And we ask Allah Ta'ala to always make us recipients of guidance and uh, recipients of his mercy. Amin, amin, amin. Beloved brothers and sisters, uh, this is the last reminder of this blessed month of Ramadan. And, um, you know, the month has gotten by us as quickly as it came upon us. It seems like it was only yesterday where we were when we were preparing for Ramadan, and now Ramadan is leaving us. And we pray to Allah Ta'ala that we have learned some valuable lessons, particularly during this uh, uh, corona fast or uh, fasting in the era of COVID-19, um, that we have benefited in ways that we did not expect or anticipate. We ask Allah Ta'ala to accept from us our fasting. We ask Allah Ta'ala to accept from us our recitation of the Quran. We ask Allah Ta'ala to accept from us our giving of charity. We ask Allah to accept from us our standing in the night vigil, however that manifested. We ask Allah to accept from us our efforts to dig deeper, to fast a deeper, more meaningful fast, uh, to find ways to um, push ourselves to connect deeper with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah ta'ala to accept us whether we did a lot or whether we did a little. We ask Allah ta'ala to forgive us if we fell short of any stated goals that we may have made at the beginning of the month, right? Um, uh, and we fell short or, you know, promises that we made to ourselves, right? That we would do certain things, but we failed to do them. We ask Allah Ta'ala to bless us to, that we have mercy on ourselves and ask Allah for his mercy, for truly it is the nature of human beings to forget. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala um, created us that way and he is most merciful with his servants uh, I think it is appropriate for us to close out the month uh, with a reminder of you know the most one of the most important tools that we need uh, moving forward after Ramadan um, so of course during the month of Ramadan we focused on the Quran so that's the main tool to maintain the connection with the Quran, that we've reestablished a connection. We've deliberately gone to the Quran and read it, and we strove to read it consciously and deeply, seeking connection and meaning, and asking Allah to open us up to insights and understanding and wisdom, right? So we must maintain that connection with the Quran. This is absolutely paramount. And then, after that, or along with that, we must commit to following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And by following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I do not mean, you know, poly parroting his words, you know, quotation of hadith, you know, the Prophet said this or the Prophet said that, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, right? Um, that we're sending out texts to one another and we're texting people hadith, you know, or we're reading hadith, or we're opening up Bukhari and we're reading hadith, 
right? Or any of these things which are uh, by their own merit, in their own merit, they're good things. However, they do not represent the true meaning of what it means to follow the sunnah of the Prophet And so following the sunnah, Allah says about this in the Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنًا لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا In Surah Al-Ahzab, which is the Confederates, uh, Allah Ta'ala says that verily you have in the Messenger of God the most excellent example to be emulated or copied. The most excellent example, Uswa Hasana. The word Uswa implies uh, doing something the way that someone else did it. And if there's any one individual, one human being who is worthy of our constant efforts to try to do things the way that he did them, that person is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Right? And by Allah, he, he showed us the way. By Allah, he set the example. By Allah, he lived his teachings. So Allah tells us, لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرِ So if it is our desire, our goal, which it is and which it should be, to seek the pleasure of Allah and to attain success in the next realm, in the next life, in the life to come, and to be among those who remember God consciously, constantly. Because these are the qualifiers. These are the reasons why we connect to the sunnah of the Prophet and strive to uh, emulate his example to the best of our ability. And for all of us, men and women, but especially as men, sometimes we reduce following the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to a beard, to clothing, you know, a kufiya, a thawb, a jillaba, you know, um, uh, you know, the shawl, the, the ring, all of these external things which are good, right? But they are not what is meant in the essence of following the sunnah of the Prophet. Because the essence of following the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, is following his lived example, his character, and trying to mold out of myself a man who carries himself in some way like Muhammad وسلم, carried himself. And that takes real soul work. That's harder than putting on this jalaba. That's harder than grooming this beard. That's harder than putting the kufiya on. Right? And so we ask Allah Ta'ala to give us the strength, the sincerity, and the determination to be people who strive to follow the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam in that way. And so I want to leave you with... Um, a reading from uh, Taj al-Arus uh, from by Ibn Atta'illah al-Iskandari, the bridegroom's crown. And this is on page 47, and it is under the subheading following the sunnah. He says, God has gathered the whole of goodness in a house and made its key following the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, follow him by being satisfied with what God has provided you. By eschewing and limiting your take of the pleasures of this world and by leaving that which does not concern you of words as well as deeds. So he highlighted, and this is in quote, he highlighted some very specific things related to following the sunnah. And he pointed us to a, a, a way in which the sunnah is lived. So he pointed to contentment, being satisfied with what Allah provides for you. And contentment um, is different than complacency. Contentment is this inner peace 
that whatever you receive or don't receive, it is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And because it is a part of Allah's master plan for you, you're cool with it. You're good with it. This is contentment. This is fana'a. This is, you know, the thing that um, puts your heart at ease, right? This includes experiences, not just material things. But whatever Allah decrees for you to experience or not experience, when you chalk it up to the fact that Allah Ta'ala knows best what is good for you and what is not good for you, this place is in your heart, contentment. So he said, follow the Prophet this way. Then follow the Prophet in um, abstaining and limiting your take of the pleasures of this world. He didn't say not take of the pleasures of this world. He said limit, which means would suggest that you control your indulgence in the pleasures of the dunya. And by Allah, we know that this dunya is full of pleasures. And so our way is a way of moderation that we don't underindulge, where we, uh, you know, um, you know, deprive ourselves, nor do we overindulge where we drown ourselves in the pleasure of this dunya because both of these states, one state leads to resentment and the other state leads to uh, heedlessness and forgetfulness. And then he says, and by leaving that which does not concern you of words as well as deeds. Very, this is golden advice. Mind your business. Keep your mouth shut more than you talk. Stay out of any other people's business more than you involve yourself in other people other people's business right and concern yourself with yourself and the best way to concern yourself with yourself is to leave what is with for other people to them mind, mind your business take care of your business this is golden advice this is truly he captured in these words the, the, the character and the lived example, the life example of the Prophet And so we ask Allah Ta'ala humbly, deeply, and sincerely to bless us to be able to um, learn from this lived example and to benefit from it by trying to mold our behavior to look more like that. Right? And that we don't make excuses and we say, well, you know, my personality is this or that and I'm, I'm fixed on my personality. Because a part of what we do when we say this is that we, you know, don't hold ourselves accountable for choices that we make. Because our responses and our reactions to things ultimately in the final analysis are choices that we make. So we ask Allah to bless us to make the better choices and the better choices are those that in which we try to emulate what Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did or would do. Keep this consciously in mind. Well, our brothers and sisters, may Allah accept from you your fast. Uh, I pray, inshallah, for you, for you, for your families. Uh, Ramadan Kareem, inshallah. Ramadan Mubarak, Eid Kareem, Eid Mubarak. May Allah keep you good. May you stay good. May you stay safe. May you stay healthy. May Allah Ta'ala protect you and your loved ones from the worst of the, the, the pandemic. May Allah Ta'ala have mercy on the people who have gone on as a result of the pandemic. May Allah have mercy on them and, 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 and give their families comfort and, and solace and, and acceptance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustain us as we live through what is really a tough time in the history of, of this country, in the history of the world. Um, and may we prepare ourselves and steel ourselves and meddle ourselves for the test to come. And may Ramadan uh, prove for us the, a, a, a great testing ground and a preparer for the things that are coming uh, that will be tough. May Allah Ta'ala keep us in faith. May Allah Ta'ala keep us in prayer. Thank you so much for tuning in to our reminders. And inshallah, we will see everyone 
soon. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.